السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى All praise due to Allah alone we praise him and we seek his help whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves astray none can show him guidance I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah alone and I bear witness that Muhammad peace be upon him is his last messenger My dear viewers Today, insha'Allah, I'd like to welcome you to another live edition of our program, Guardians of the Pious. Today's episode is number 414, and it will be the second in studying chapter number 182. Um, and today, insha'Allah, we'll begin with another beautiful hadith narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, radiyallahu an, and it's a sound hadith agreed upon its authenticity. In this sound hadith, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu an said, Anna Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama qala lahu, laqad utita mizmaran min mazamiri ali Dawood. Which means that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, may Allah be pleased with him, indeed you've been given a mizmar. Uh, out of the mazamir of Prophet David, peace be upon him. The hadith is collected by Imam Bukhari and Muslim. Shortly, inshallah, we'll get to learn the meaning of the term mizmar and its plural mazamir and Dawood or Ali Dawood. Then in another narration collected by Imam Muslim, may Allah have mercy on him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to him, لو رأيتني وأنا أستمع لقراءتك البارحة أو You should have seen me I was listening to your citation of the Quran last night So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was listening to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari's recitation and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari was unaware and why was he listening to his recitation we will learn inshallah in a little bit as well First of all, what is the meaning of the word mizmar? Mizmar is the name of a musical instrument, the flute. And its plural is mazamir. But don't we know that it is not permissible to blow in the flute and to play the musical instruments, including the flute? And it is not permissible to listen to it, correct. But when somebody's voice is very melodious and his tone is very attractive, he is described or his voice is described as music. It is mere description. So Prophet Dawood alayhi salam or David peace be upon him have received a Zabur, the book which Allah the Almighty has revealed to him is called a Zabur. And he granted him such a melodious voice and a very sweet one that whenever Prophet David, peace be upon him, used to recite from a zabur in the open, Allah the Almighty described what happens whenever Dawood would recite with his melodious voice which sounded like a flute. So he said that the bird and the mountains would join him in making tasbih and echoing his recitation of az zabur So in Surah Sabah, Allah the Almighty allowed the mountains to join Prophet Dawood and similarly the birds to, to join Prophet David in his recitation and 
to echo his melodious voice. So Allah Almighty said, Ya Jibalu awibi ma'ahu wa tayr. O mountains, awibi ma'ahu wa tayr. You and the mountains, the birds and the mountains, join Prophet David, peace be upon him, in his recitation. Do birds understand the word of Allah? Of course they do. Do animals praise Allah? What about mountains? Do they understand mountains? Aren't they like lifeless objects? Anonymous? Correct. But we also know that in Surah Al-Isra, the Almighty Allah said about every creature, whether living or what we consider non-living, such as the mountains, the stones, the sun, the moon, the trees, Allah the Almighty said, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ So he began by saying, the heavens, the seven heavens, and the earth, and what is in both of them, they glorify his praise. And they keep saying that indeed Allah is free from any imperfection. وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ And there is not a single creature, a single thing, whether you perceive it as a living thing or a non-living thing, but they glorify the praise of Allah the Almighty. وَلَكِن لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ Yet, you understand not the way of their glorification of Allah and praising Him, the way of their worship. So the Almighty Allah says that He ordered the mountains and the birds to join Prophet David, peace be upon him, in ayah number 10 of Surah Saba. Ya Jibal, awibi ma'ahu wa tayr. And He also said with regards to the mountains concerning the Quran, لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل Had we revealed this Quran which was given to you, O Muhammad, to be recited upon human beings and the jinn, if this Quran was revealed and if it was sent down upon a mountain, الجبال رواسي, what is the purpose of the creation of the mountains? To maintain the stability of the earth. So the mountains are among the hardest and the most powerful creation of Allah. But he says in Surah Al-Hash, if this Quran were revealed on the mountains, on, on a mountain, لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ The mountain would have uh, fallen or asunder and fallen apart out of the fear of Allah. So even the mountains, they perceive the word of Allah and they do worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, when Allah the Almighty said that Prophet David, everything used to join him in the recitation of Az-Zabur or the Psalms because of his melodious and sweet tone and voice, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam resembled the beautiful recitation and the melodious voice of the great companion Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu an to one of the mazamir of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. This is one thing, this is as far as the meaning of indeed you've been given one of the, the, the mizmar out of the mazamir of Dawood, one of the flutes, one of the melodious uh, sounds similar to Prophet David, peace be upon him, whenever he would recite the Psalms or the Az-Zabur. Then Allah the Almighty grants whomever he wills the beautiful sound. And some people work on improving their voice by perfecting the ahkam, by knowing how to recite correctly. So a combination of both becomes a marvelous thing. You like to listen to the Quran because it sounds as the way that Jibreel alayhi salam recited it to the Prophet sallallahu 
السلام. And in the previous episode, we said Allah does not listen attentively to anything as much as He listens to the recitation of the Quran being recited by one of His prophets in such a melodious voice and a loud recitation. So Allah too likes to hear the recitation of the Quran by a melodious voice. When the Prophet وسلم, would ask once Abdullah ibn Mas'ud to recite before him, and he says, how can I recite it before you? It was revealed unto you. Recite, recite. I like to listen to it from other than myself. Because listening to the Quran is also an act of worship. And also we say that Ibn al-Qayyim counted among the five ways that people have abandoned the Quran. He said, Hadru al-Sama. They, they did not listen to it. Or they barely listen to it. Listen to the Quran should be a daily routine. Like a homework. Not just the recitation, but also the listening to the Quran. Why? There is also another benefit from listening to the Quran besides their word. You know, our teachers used to say, Al-Qari'u kal-Halib. Look at the resemblance. al qari the reciter, he's exerting a tremendous effort to purify his voice, meanwhile to observe all the rules and regulations of the recitation and the characteristics of the letters and the proper articulation point and all of that. So it's a lot of effort, a lot of effort. While this is an effort that is exerted by the reciter, while as sami I said last time, if I sit and listen to Sheikh Minshawi, the, Mujaw the Mujawad format of any chapter of the Quran, I, I, I never have enough. I have it in my car every single time I start the car, wherever I'm traveling or even if a short distance driving. Beautiful. It comforts me. It gives me a peace of mind. So the Qari is making the effort and as Sami is just enjoying so Al-Qari is like the person who is making the effort of milking the sheep, the goat, the cow, while as sami he is drinking with ease. He is not making much of effort. I'm driving, I'm listening, and I'm enjoying listening to the recitation of a melodious voice Qari. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once shared with Abu Musa Al-Ash'ari لو رأيتني وأنا أستمع لقراءتك البارحة يعني it's like there is a, a continuation to the story why the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم admired the recitation of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari because once he listened to, in, to him in the beginning it was accidentally then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم sat down or paused to listen to his recitation deliberately until he finished so when he said that your recitation was so beautiful that if you were to see me last night, I was listening to your recitation until he finished. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, in another narration, said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet of Allah, have I known that? لَحَبَّرْتُهُ لَكَ تَحْبِيرًا I would have purified my voice even more knowing that you are listening to my recitation. So what is recommended in the recitation of the Quran, brothers and sisters, is to make an effort to purify your voice with the recitation of the Quran as we will study in another hadith in a little bit. It will be hadith number 1007. But now, before that, there is another hadith agreed upon its authenticity. How many of you, how many of you dreamt of Listening to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam reciting Quran, wallahi, it is the most beautiful dream, because if you listen to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him reciting Quran, that means if you see that in a dream, that means that's a glad tiding that you will enter paradise and you will join the Prophet in perhaps al firdaus al a'la, and you will be one of the luckiest who would listen to the Prophet peace be upon him reciting. Quran. I want you to imagine that 
how lucky were the companions to be around the Prophet ﷺ to listen to his recitation in Fajr, in Maghrib, and in Isha. Amazing. Amazing. This is the first Quran. It was recited by Allah to Jibreel. Then Jibreel just recited it to the Prophet ﷺ and he was taught as how to recite it the same way that Allah recited it to Jibreel, peace be upon him. Every time I think of Thumama ibn Athal, the leader of Yamama, one of the worst opponents of Prophet Muhammad and Muslims, and how he was taken as a prisoner of war, then the Prophet وسلم, said, keep him in the masjid. He's arrested, but keep him in the masjid. Okay? Not in a private cell. Then for three days, Thumama ibn Athal was a captive audience. He would listen to the Quran being recited by Prophet Muhammad in Fajr, in Maghrib and Isha. And he was not just a kafir, but he was the worst enemy to Prophet Muhammad and to Muslims. It only took him three days, brothers and sisters. It only took him three days. And after three days, when the Prophet ﷺ released him, he made ghusl and he returned back to take shahada and accept Islam. It's irresistible. It is the most powerful magnet that attracts the hearts. Even non-Muslims, when Muhammad ﷺ was banned from reciting Quran around the Kaaba and in public, and the Meccan pagans drew a perfect plot in order to hinder people from listening to him, they said, لا تسمعوا لهذا القرآن والغوا فيه لعلكم تغلبون. They said, your best bet in order to stop people from accepting Islam is to stop them from listening to the Quran. When this man recites Quran, women, children, everybody gathers around him. They like it. So what to do? They said, every time you hear him reciting Quran, sing songs, dance, clap, and make noise so that people will get distracted and they will not have a chance to listen to the recitation of Quran by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then at one night, when three of the Meccan chieftains named Abu Sufyan, before accepting Islam, Abu Jahl, and Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraiq, they all spent the whole night, the whole night until dawn, Everyone was resting against one of the walls of the room of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to listen because they were mesmerized. They were so much attracted to his recitation. Now he's not reciting around the Kaaba. Now he is not inviting people. He's praying to Hajjud in the privacy of his room. In the darkness of the night, they would go, they would sneak out in order to listen not for an hour, not for two hours, but the whole night until they feared the morning would come and people may see them in this condition while they are the Meccan chieftains, while they are the same people who are ordering them not to listen to Muhammad, accusing him of being a sorcerer, sometimes a madman and an insane some other times, a liar some other times. Now they themselves, the three biggest chieftains, are listening to the recitation and enjoy. And when they met with each other, as they were leaving, they took promises from each other and covenants. We shouldn't do that again. This is very wrong. This is very wrong. What if people were to see us? The next day, three of them broke their promises. And they sat to listen to the recitation of the Prophet ﷺ. I don't blame them. Do you? I don't blame them. I envy them they got to listen to the Prophet for one night and for the second night and for the third night and after three nights. Every night they keep making promises that we shall not come back. So Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraiq visits Abu Sufyan and says, what do you think of what you heard? He admires what he heard. And he visits Abu Jahl and he says, what do you think of what you heard? Then he shares with him the truth, the very obvious truth. He says, Yes, it's lovely. But the problem is not what he is reciting. The problem is that Muhammad happened to be a prophet from Bani Hashim, Bani Abdi Manaf. 
while his tribe and our tribe have been always in competition. Anything they do would do similar to it, would become even, like two horses running together on the racetrack, parallel to each other. And now all of a sudden they have this big jump and they say, God has sent a prophet from among us. How can we claim to have a prophet like him? So the only problem is because he was not from his tribe. Rather, he was from Bani Abdi Manaf. And to him, that was very problematic. So now, that was like a little introduction to the hadith of Al-Bara ibn Azib, radiyallahu an. When he said, سَمِعْتُ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ قَرَأَ فِي الْعِشَاءِ بِالتِّينِ وَالزَّيْتُونِ فما سمعت أحدا أحسن صوتا منه متفق عليه. He said, uh, "May Allah be pleased with him. I have heard the messenger of Allah peace be upon him reciting surah At-Tini wa Zaytun. Ah, this short surah, correct? Chapter number ninety-five, brothers and sisters. وَالتِّينِ وَالزَّيْتُونِ وَطُورِ سِينِينَ وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينِ لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين؟ That said the surah, eight short ayahs. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم recited in surah al Isha, in salat al Isha, in Isha prayer. So Al Bara ibn Azib says, I never, I've never ever heard anyone recite in Quran in a better or more beautiful voice. Than the voice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It makes my body shiver. I wish, I hope, and I pray that Allah the Almighty will give us all the opportunity to listen to Prophet Muhammad's recitation. That's gonna be in heaven, inshallah, brothers and sisters. He used to recite the Quran beautifully, and he admired those who recite the Quran with a melodious voice, and he ordered. All of us, all of the Muslims, to recite the Quran with a melodious voice, we will learn how, inshallah, when we come back from a short break. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in seven different ways of recitation. Similarly, Maryam alayhi salam, she's a woman by herself. She doesn't even have a husband who's ever touched her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted a child to Maryam alayhi salam. Look at that. She said that, how will I have a child? How will I have a child whilst I've never even been touched by a man? One of the unique things about the story is that it's not like Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses. Can you imagine that Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses? He became sick from the effect that this ayah ended up having on his, on his mind. Oh, my. 
محمد رسول الله. The best stories are the stories mentioned in the Quran. The best speech is the speech of Allah in the Quran. And the best of all other human beings are the messengers of Allah. We would listen, inshallah ta'ala, to some beautiful recitations from verses in the Quran that talks about the messengers of Allah. Join us in Quran Circle 4. We will do all of this by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy and accept from all of us. We are on air again. Glad tidings to Huda TV viewers worldwide for the resumption of live broadcasting on Now Set. We are now broadcasting on the advanced DVB-S2 system. Tune in using our new frequency, 12188 horizontal on now set. Please note, you will need to have a modern HD receiver in order to tune in. Enjoy your favorite edutainment programs with crystal clear resolution. Huda TV, a light in every home. I spend my life Running away from you Now I have nowhere To turn except to you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created man And man has outer features as well as inner features One of the most important of his inner features is his heart So what is the heart? What is meant by this heart that is in our bodies? And what is the health of the heart and what is the disease of the heart? There are many diseases of the heart and there are many actions of the heart, things that make it healthy. So what are these diseases? What are these actions? Come and join us on Huda TV in this program of ours, Heart Therapy. So drink my heart, please, wash the filth away. Don't leave me drowning here, alone and astray. Don't leave me drowning here, alone and astray. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back brothers and sisters to the second segment of today's program Gardens of the Pious and uh, the following hadith is a divine command to make an effort to recite the Quran with a melodious voice and with a sweet tone the hadith is collected by Imam Abu Dawood in his Sunan narrated Abu Lubaba Bashir ibn Abd al-Munzir رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من لم يتغن بالقرآن فليس منا من لم يتغن بالقرآن فليس منا أبو لبابة ابن عبد المنذر may Allah be pleased with him narrated that the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said one who doesn't recite the Quran in a pleasant tone is not one of us it's a serious warning. And after all the previous ahadith describing the merits of reciting Quran with a sweet uh, voice, it is something worth trying. And but what is the meaning of yataghanna? The word yataghanna to me ghina and ghina in Arabic is singing. Is it meant to sing the Quran? What is meant is 
to recite the Quran with a beautiful sound. And this beautiful sound is not only relying on being talented because recently we heard that some of the uh, singers, they decided to record the recitation of the Quran. Well, I don't mind, but first you have to learn how to recite it. Even if you're an Arab, it doesn't mean that you can open the Quran and you recite without being trained, without being coached and tutored as how to recite the Quran. The Quran is different than the Hadith and it is definitely different than reading the newspaper and it is with no doubt different than reading chemistry or studying math or reading any other book whether in Arabic or any other language. That's a totally different story. And also it is different than the recitation of uh, the Bible in all its different versions or the Old Testament or the Torah. Absolutely different. I have attended many debates, I've attended many uh, interfaith dialogues in synagogues, in masajid, in churches, and whenever any of the uh, Jewish rabbis or Christian priests, they come to recite from their own books, it is like you're reading an audio book where you can just read out loud, you know. And to be honest with you, it is very hard to tell whether this is, uh, uh, you know, a verse of supposedly the word of God or the book of God, or you're just reading a quote of any person. But when it comes to the Qur'an, no way. It is totally different. So at bil Qur'an entails, number one, studying the proper ahkam. Knowing where to prolong this mad six counts, and it's a lazim, it's a must, versus permissible mad in the case of separate permissible mad, you can make it only two or four, and uh, by the end of the word, if the uh, connected mad, uh, four or six or, you know, rules and regulations. This science is called tajweed. Tajweed, yani tahseen, to recite the Quran in a better way, to purify your recitation of the Quran. That automatically leads to improving your sound. Even if you're not talented, even if you're not gifted, you're not a singer, but you know how to recite with the proper ahkam, this is taghani bil Qur'an. You recite it out loud, you recite it with the proper ahkam, you don't confuse the letters. Each letter you treat it as an independent person has its own characteristics. And sometimes the same letter have certain characteristics they vary and they differ from one time to another, depending on what vowel is on this letter, depending on what letter before it and what letter after it. You know, it's not just, uh, you know, you want to sing the Quran, you can sing it. No. There was a person by the name Zadan, and he was a musician and singer in, um, uh, in Iraq, where Abdullah ibn Mas'ud traveled to and he spent the rest of his life. May Allah be pleased with him. So as he was passing by in one of the streets, he saw him was playing music and singing, and people were surrounding him. So he looked at him, and he kicked that musical instrument with his leg, and he said, I wish that you have utilized this gift of having a melodious voice to recite the Quran instead of singing. So, he looked at this guy, who, who are you? How dare you say that to me and you do that to me? Look at those fans listen, listening and enjoying, uh, listening to my singing and uh, playing music. And then he was told, this is Sahib Rasulullah, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. So he dropped everything behind and he rushed after him. When Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, felt that somebody is running after him, he turned around then he opened his arms. He was a dad. He jumped into his hug and he hugged him tight and he made dua for him. And that was a turning point in the life of this very famous singer back then where he repented and he indeed utilized this melodious voice uh, in the recitation of the Quran. I don't mind if a singer wants to learn how to recite Quran, then recite it 
with the proper ahkam. But it isn't only about singing without observing the rules and regulations of the Quran. Changing a single vowel would change the entire meaning, brothers and sisters. In Surah Al-Fatiha, which is one of the greatest demonstrations of monotheism, it is only you whom we worship. It is only you whom we seek uh, your help. Guide us to the path of those whom you've bestowed your guidance upon them. So if you say an'amtu instead of an'amta, you messed up. You changed the verse from monotheism to disbelief. Just one single vowel. Changing the pronunciation of the scene to be sad because of, you know, fattening the scene. So it sounds like sad. Changes the meaning of the word. And it could lead to providing the opposite meaning. That is why the scholars of uh, Tajweed said, وَالْأَغْضُ بِالْتَجْوِيدِ حَتْمٌ لَازِمُ مَنْ لَمْ يُجَوِّدُ الْقُرْآنَ فَهُوَ آثِمُ It's a must for every Muslim to learn how to recite the Qur'an with the proper ahkam. And if you don't, you're blameworthy. That's what they said. The question for you, I mean, your question for me, I anticipate it, which is, then how? Yesterday in Askoda, we had a sister from Switzerland. She called in, you know, a Swiss sister, Muslim woman, and she is learning how to read Quran, and she mentioned that her tutor is another female teacher from Pakistan. Nowadays, it has become very accessible. You don't have to travel to study here or there. You can study at the convenience of your home. This is the learning. Just sign up with any of these institutes or private tutoring, you know. And this is the best way to spend your money and the greatest blessing in your wealth to spend your money to learn how to recite the word of Allah, to learn how to understand it and how to ponder over it. If you do that and you observe the ahkam of tajweed, that automatically leads to granting you this taghani. So you recite it with a beautiful voice because of the observation of the ahkam, the ghunna, the khalqala, the mudud, and, and all of that. On top of that, some people are already talented. Allah granted them this, uh, you know, nice tone, sweet voice. They could have used it in singing you know, in weddings, in festivals, but rather they use that by learning the ahkam of the tajweed. So they recite the Qur'an melodiously. They, they, they lead the prayer where how often you say that, MashaAllah, the imam who led the Isha prayer tonight, I feel like I don't want him to finish. Or especially in Fajr prayer, he recited already one rubah or two pages, and it took him 15 to 20 minutes for two rakahs. But after he finishes, people will ask him, why did he make it short, Shaykh? We're enjoying the recitation. This is a good thing. Why? Because if the person is reciting correctly and with a melodious voice, you don't want to finish the prayer. Rather, you want to continue the prayer. That's why Mu'ad ibn Jabal, radiyallahu an, was also granted this gift. So they asked him to lead them in the prayer. Why he said, but I love to pray behind the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the masjid. They said, it's okay. We will wait for you. You go ahead and you pray behind the Prophet ﷺ in his masjid and you come to us far away from al-masjid al-nabat. We're waiting for you. Sit in the masjid. Why? We want to enjoy your citation. Not everybody can afford to go to the prophetic masjid or al-masjid al nabawi But they can afford to stay in their locality waiting for Mu'ad ibn Jabal. So he would attend the Isha with the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ normally would shorten the recitation in the Isha prayer. Unlike what most of the Imams do nowadays. He said, when it comes to Isha prayer, man salla bin nasi fal yukhaffif. Make it short and brief. Recite, wa shamsi wa ruhaha. Recite, wa duha wa layli idha saja. And we just saw uh, Al-Bara ibn Azib in his hadith, he said, I prayed which prayer behind the Prophet وسلم, in which he recited Surah Wattini wa Zaytun, only eight ayahs, four lines. It was an Isha prayer. So, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak, a few verses in the first rak'ah, in the second rak'ah, Wattini wa Zaytun. Why? Because after Isha, people need to sleep and rest. But in Fajr, he can recite as long as you want, as long as um, you don't wait until it is sunrise. So, 
That is the meaning of man lam yataghanna bil Qur'an fa laysa minna. Every Muslim should make an effort to recite the Qur'an with a beautiful voice. And that is the greatest investment uh, in your children, brothers and sisters. I know that all of us are very keen to put our kids in the best possible schools and pay whatever it takes, even if we save from our meals, so that they acquire good education. Then they go to medical school or law school, engineering or whatever school that we uh, anticipate that it will make their future bright. But most importantly, what about, you know, the Quran? Do they know how to read Quran? It will, I'm an American. It doesn't matter whether you're an American or from the, or Russian or from China. Every Muslim should learn how to recite the Quran properly. When I die, if my kids know how to read Quran and they understand or uh, as much as they can out of it, and alhamdulillah, they are working on implementing that. When I die, die in peace. Die and the meter of the good deeds is still running, counting for you. Every time they recite Quran, they earn good deeds and you too earn good deeds because they are doing so because of you. You're the one who taught them. And congratulations to all the teachers of the Quran, those who are sincere among them, those who do not exaggerate in charging the students or their families in teaching Quran. They know that the money of the whole world cannot compensate for teaching one class of the Quran. But this is as Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on him, said, this is called Adr al -habs. This is the money that we're paying you so that you can spare us some time. And instead of going to the market or going to your job or work, we say, please, quit work and work in teaching us the Quran. So the haps is the time that you're spending with us, not the knowledge that you're teaching, because it is priceless. With the last hadith in the chapter, hadith number 1008, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu qal, قال, لي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اقرأ علي القرآن فقلت يا رسول الله اقرأ عليك وعليك انزل قال اني احب ان اسمعه من غيري فقرأت عليه سورة النساء حتى جئت الى هذه الآية فكيف اذا جئنا من كل امة بشهيد وجئنا بك على هؤلاء شهيدا قال حسبك الان فالتفت اليه فاذا عيناه تذرفان متفق عليه We heard this hadith before We heard oftenly that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم love to listen to the Qur'an from others, especially if Allah blessed them with a melodious voice. One of them was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. But Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked him, he said, Ya Abdullah, iqra' alayya al-Qur'an, recite the Qur'an to me. So he said, O Messenger of Allah, shall I recite it to you when it was revealed to you? So he said, peace be upon him, yes, I like to hear it from others. So I began to recite Surah An-Nisa. And when I reached the ayah, which uh, means, how will it be when we shall bring a witness from every people and bring you as a witness, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, against them. Having heard it, he said, enough, enough. Then when I looked at him, I found his eyes were overflown with tears. Those tears, brothers and sisters, were simply as a result of pondering over the meaning of the ayah. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ explained the meaning of this ayah. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا يَوْمَئِذِ يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَعَصَوُ الرَّسُولَ لَوْ تُسَوَّى بِهِمُ الْأَرْضُ, الأرض وَلَا يَكْتُمُونَ اللَّهَ حَدِيثًا so the meaning of the ayah, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that uh, on the day of judgment, Allah the Almighty will bring every ummah, every nation and will bring a witness over them to testify whether they did good or bad. Every ummah would have a prophet to witness and testify for or against them. 
وجئنا بك على هؤلاء شهيدان أنس محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والبيع شهيد أن أرجينس هز أمة So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when the prophets will come on the day of judgment, some prophets will come with a bunch of followers, some prophets will come with a large volume of followers, some prophets would come with only two followers, and some prophets would come with one, and others would come with no followers whatsoever. Allah the Almighty will question Prophet Nuh alayhi wa sallam, Oh Nuh, have you delivered my message to your people? And he will answer in the affirmative. Yes, indeed, I did. Then he will answer, he will ask the people of Nuh, whom Allah the Almighty said that, فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا The Quran says that Prophet Nuh was sent by Allah to his people and he lasted for 950 years giving them da'wah. Giving them da'wah since he was appointed as a prophet until the flood it took them 950 years. This is how long they used to live. So he will ask the people of Prophet Nuh, peace be upon him, have my Prophet Nuh come to you? Did he deliver my message to you? Didn't he tell you to worship Allah alone and to abandon other false deities? So uh, they will answer in the negative. They will answer in the negative. Say, no, he never did. So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask Prophet Nuh, peace be upon him, will your people are denying the fact that you've been sent to them and you give them da'wah for so long. So, do you have a shahid? Do you have a witness? Allah knows best and he's the one who sent him. But this is the court of the ultimate justice. So Allah wants people to testify against themselves and against others. Against or for. In this case, now he will say, yes, I have many witnesses. But whom? He said, the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is the last and the youngest prophet of all your children. He said, yes. So Allah the Almighty will ask the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Do you guys know whether Prophet Nuh been sent to his people or not? Yes, we do. It is fine that he spends so much time giving da'wah to his people. Yes, we do. And how do you know? Well, you revealed to us in the Quran in Surah Al-Ankabut, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا فَأَخَدَهُمُ الطُّوفَانُ وَهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ Oh, Surah Al-Ankabut, chapter number 29, in Ayah number 14, Allah has told us about the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam and his story and how long he spent with his people. And by the end, Allah drowned them with the flood while they were uh, wronging themselves. So this is the meaning of that we will testify. Every ummah will have a shahid, but our ummah will be the shahid over the rest of the ummah, and our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, will be a shahid over us. Hopefully Prophet Muhammad will testify for us, and that would require us to be true followers of Prophet Muhammad وسلم. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest The one and only glory to him He wanted humans to be the best And give his best religion to them So why did they ignore that Forgetting all about hell in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price Rasulallah, Habib Allah Rasulallah